Hey everyone, Luke here, aka Stone Mosaic, and I'm here with another comic review. Um, this time on the Red Diaries. Um, pretty interesting, um, interesting series written by Gary Reed. You get the uh, here. Gary Reed, illustrated by Chris Jones and Lawrence Campbell. This is from uh, about the late '90s. This was originally. Um, Published by Caliber Press, Caliber Comics, as a four issue mini series. Um, they went out of business, so the rights um, to the series reverted back to Gary Reed. Then he had um, released through um, an imprint or an image called uh, Desperado. I don't really know if that's still around. I haven't really seen anything about it since I've been following, since I've been following comics um, over the last year. Uh, but basically, it has to do with this. Um, this paranormal investigative team that also deals with conspiracies. They're called uh, Raven Inc. They're led by a guy named Edgar Allan Raven. It doesn't really appear all that much. There, there, there are other characters that appear quite a bit more in, doing, in their task with um, you know, various aspects of the actual investigation, trying to find these red diaries, which um, apparently, at least according to the story, um, contain info that Marilyn Monroe um, wrote about stuff relating to trying to assassinate Castro to um, um, yeah, um, the whole Bay of Pigs fiasco, a lot of different things that are very top secret and that were allegedly told to her by Robert F. Kennedy, who she was seeing at the time. She thought, um, you know, Kennedy's could provide her with a, a measure of respect or Dignity, I guess, that, that she didn't feel like she was getting just because of, of the role that she was playing in in Hollywood. And of course, there's, um, I don't know if it's the rumor or if, or if it's heavily implied in real life that she had, she had a uh, relationship with JFK, but um, the book treats that as a fact. I don't want to get into if that really, really was. I haven't really read enough to know, but um, so it, it, it deals with, with a sort of semi-fictional account of um, you know, her, her rise and fall and, you know, you know, how the, uh, Kennedys and the mob and a bunch of other groups were involved, CIA. Um, there were actually some interesting text pieces between each, each um, issue, but I read, I read basically all of what, um, was put there on some, on some of them. I think I hadn't read very much about Monroe, so I read a little bit about her, her, um, her history and how she got to where she was. So very interesting stuff. I like the, um, the art style. It kind of um, kind of grew on me a little bit. Um, it was kind of interesting to see the sort of cold case file brought back up. Um, in fact, I have some art that I want to show you guys. Let me get the uh, camera right here. It's not gonna let me uh, change the the angle here. So let's flip here. That was pretty interesting. This is a scene where two of the um, the Raven Inc. members are um, basically forced to having a sit down meeting with a mob boss. You see kind of a cool perspective of the guy's food before them and the uh, utensils looming large. I really like that stylistic um, um, addition there. That was pretty interesting. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that before, but. Be interesting to see other artists who have an interesting sort of force perspective uh, thing. And here's uh, the leader of Raven Inc., Edgar Allan Raven. Nice shading there to indicate shadow. Well drawn. Anyway, um, this is a force you series. I think it ran a bit longer than normal series do because of the actual text pieces, but um, the ending is kind of vague, as a lot of conspiracy type. Um, fiction is just because, you know, you know, if everything was, was solved, then, you know, you wouldn't really want to, want to go back and, you know, go back to that, that, that well again. It's sort of like the, the X-Files, not going to solve everything. They want you to keep reading, keep watching, keep, you know, trying to discover piece by piece what's going on along with the characters. And, um, so, you know, I mean, I feel like it could have been better in that, in that sense. And there's a lot of dialogue and, um, although it is kind of refreshing to see not a whole lot of violence going on. I mean, there are people who die, but, um, 
thought that was kind of interesting that, that they sort of went away from that route of having, you know, shootouts or having, you know, sort of things like that and keeping a lot more ground level and more investigative. Um, the art was definitely strong and I think it's, it's interesting that this this subject matter gets it's talked about because it's sort of taboo. Oh, you know, you can't talk about conspiracies. You know, there's always a, you know, the whole lone gunman theory thrown out here and some well-written text pieces here in uh, the Red Diaries. Um, you know, for some interesting reading and I think some interesting arguments to be made in case you are talking about uh, these events with your friends. So anyway, I, um, I'll give this probably, um, gee, what do I give it? Probably give it a three and a half out of five. I felt like the actual trade itself, you know, the actual package had some sort of thin paper. You kind of see the preceding page on the page you were on at any given moment. And um, I felt like it could have been maybe produced a bit better, but I'm not sure if that would have cost more to have better paper. But um, the actual story itself, it, it kind of feels like it kind of goes around in circles and doesn't really uh, solve a whole lot, but it's still interesting to follow, and the art kind of grows on me. It wasn't like my favorite throughout, but it was it was good. It's something, something that wasn't terrible, but um, I don't know. If I give this a three and a half out of five, if you're interested in the JFK assassination, all all the sort of conspiracy type stuff, I definitely recommend that you would, you would check it out. Maybe you would glean something from it. And there's a, even a, a bibliography that Gary Reed used when. Um, you know, something the facts and stuff like that about what he was writing to, you know, give it an air of, of reality. And um, so that was pretty good. That's um, The Red Diaries. Uh, next time I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do the last James Bond um, trade that I have. Casino Royale. I've been trying to, I've been getting all, um, my order all, all mixed up. Um, I originally plan on doing Green Arrow and then doing my Tampa Bay Comic Con video and then doing this one and then doing James Bond, but I'm doing this one um, sort of in a, in a different order. But I'm gonna make sure they, they get put in the right order. So if you if you watch them chronologically, you'll you'll you won't be put off by by them sort of jumping around and not being <laughs> not being in the right order. But anyway, um, good book. Definitely get it if your library can get it to the interlibrary loan system. But otherwise. Um, yeah, that's all for me, and uh, happy reading, guys.